Hi everyone, this is Carrick. This practice is focused on specifically on stretching and strengthening um, the wrist, uh, grip strength, so your fingers, um, and getting into the forearms a little bit. So let's get started right away. Um, start on all fours and turn your hands around. So we're gonna point the fingers towards your knees, the opposite direction that we normally do. This is already very intense for me. Um, you can lean forward to make it a little bit easier. And then as you start to lean back, all right, so throughout the practice here, spread your fingers wide, keep the fingers spread wide, create an even spread between the fingers, and then push down through the four corners of your palms. I'll tell you what those are. The index finger knuckles, the base of the thumbs, the baby finger knuckles, and the base of the baby fingers, right? Now start to lean back, take your hips back, and stretch the wrists and uh, the forearms. A couple of breaths. Breathe into the stretch, like pull your breath into the most intense part of the stretch. Just another breath. All right, and then turn the hands back around. All right, so I'm going to review those four corners of the palm really quick. So index finger knuckle, base of the thumb, Pinky finger knuckle, base of the pinky finger. These are the four corners of the palms. It's really important that all four of those points stay glued to the mat. Um, if you're new to the yoga practice and you're not used to having your hands on the ground very much, the tendency will be for the index finger knuckle to pop up. So you'll get, I don't know if you can see it from here, there, but um, the index finger knuckle will lift up and there'll be this gap, right? That is really hard on the outer wrist. So push the index finger knuckle to the ground. Let's move into down dog. Spread your fingers wide. Set your hands as wide as your outer shoulders. Now to get more of the weight to the index finger knuckles, the front part of the palms, lift the heels of your hands off the ground so you're on your fingers and what I'm going to call the ridge tops, which is this first knuckle. All right, so lift the heels of the hands up and hold. Lift the underside of the arms up. Lift your armpits up, press your heart towards the ground. Let's just do a couple of breaths here. And then put your hands back down on the ground. Good. Again, lift the heels of the hands. Keep the forearms lifted. Keep your armpits lifted. I know this gets intense very fast. Heart soft. And then hands to the ground. Good. Sque spread your fingers wide. Push the four corners of the palms to the ground. In order of importance, index finger knuckles, base of the thumbs, Pinky finger knuckles, base of the pinky fingers. One more time, lift the heels of the hands up. Keep them lifted. Keep the underside of the arms lifted high. I know this is intense. Drop your heart low. Good, and then both hands to the ground. Good. Um, shift forward to plank, the top of a push-up. All right, fingers spread wide. Now, as well as pushing down through the four corners of your palms, push the finger pads into the mat. So the ends of your fingers, it's like you're trying to fingerprint yourself on the mat. And then you drag your fingers, the finger pads, towards the center of your palms, and the second knuckles might lift off the ground, okay? So like the, the middle joint might lift up off the ground. All right, but the palms stay flat, the four corners stay down, and the finger pads press into the floor. Keep that lower to chaturanga. Inhale to cobra. Exhale to down dog. Now try to maintain the pressure, the even pressure through the four corners of the palms and the finger pads. So you basically have nine points of contact with each hand on the ground. Four corners of the palms and each of the five finger pads. One more time, shift forward to plank. So the challenge is to keep the weight evenly distributed on the hands no matter which pose we move through. So plank, chaturanga, cobra, the hands are in the same position the same the whole time. Down dog. One more time, shift forward to plank. Spread your fingers wide, palms flat, four corners of the palms press, finger pads press. Lower, chaturanga, cobra, downward facing dog. Good, pause. Now this time, lift the heels of the hands just like a millimeter off the ground. Just high enough to slide a hundred dollar bill under the heels of your hands. And believe me, if I had $100 bills to slide under the heels of your hands, you would do it. You would lift your heel, the heels of your hands just high enough. You should feel the underside of the forearm start to burn. Press your heart back and then push the heels of the hands into the ground. Good. Come down to your hands and knees. 
All right, let's shift gears just a little bit. Um, actually, let's open up the wrist just a little bit. Stand in a forward bend, and then slide your palms under your feet with your palms face up. Crawl your toes all the way to the base of your palms, and then push your toes down. Look forward and reach your heart forward. So you're going to lift your chest to stretch your arms. And you're think about making more space in the wrist joint. Okay, so in the wrist, you're going to open up the space by pushing your toes down and lifting your chest up. Create more space. All right, and then release the hands. Let's go to crow pose. Um, really important in crow pose to keep the four corners of the palms pressed and then your finger pads the ends of your fingers in crow are your brakes. That's what keeps you from falling on your head. So if you stop pushing into the fingers, you run the risk of tumbling over, of rolling forward. So you can use your fingers. If you push your fingers, you can push them so much that it pushes you back to your feet. So let's go kneecaps or shins on the upper arms. Squeeze your elbows in. Find the four corners of your palms. Push down and then push the finger pads into the mat. Knees on the arms. Lean forward. You don't even have to lift up to start to feel the work in your hands. Pull your finger pads towards the center of your palms. Push the finger pads down. So just by pushing my fingers into the ground, I can push myself back to my feet. So I'm not leaning back through my hips. I'm literally pushing my hands down to push myself back to my feet. And then by altering the pressure in my hands, I can lean my crow pose forward or back, right? Not by moving um, my hips or my upper body, but by controlling it with my hands. And really that's what helps me balance, right? So I can push back or I can let myself pitch a little forward, right? So hands really important in crow pose and then building quite a bit of strength there. Let's do one more. Let's shake out the wrists a little bit. All right, so then being on the hands um, quite a bit, um, just shake them out. I like to make space in the joint when I've been on them for a while. So you can uh, wrap your middle and your index finger around the base of the palm and then just pull. And then as you're pulling, you're making more space in the joint. And then just work the hand back and forth a couple of times. That already feels better for me. Okay, the other stretches, we, we started with this. So just stretching the wrist the other way. Lean back. If you want to make this a lot more intense, you can move back towards down dog. This gets intense really, really fast. This is as far as I can go. It doesn't even look like down dog. All right, let's come back onto the palms. One more big exercise. So plank. I, I don't even know how many of these I can do because I've never maxed out. Um, I usually give up after three, OK? So here's the exercise. From palms flat, we're going to lift up onto the ridge tops with as little momentum as possible. So try not to rock back and forth. That's cheating. You're just going to lift the heels of the hands up. That's one. And down as slow as possible. Two and down. You can try lifting one hand at a time if that makes it easier. Three. Like if I shift my weight to one side, I can lift one side and then the other. I'm going to count that as four. And up again for five. I'm using a little bit of momentum. I'm going to try to minimize that. Six and down. I'm going to go one at a time. Seven and down. Eight. Down. Nine, down, one more, 10. Oh my gosh, that is so crazy hard. The first couple, I always think this is no big deal. This is easy. Um, that's the first time I've done that many. All right, stretch it out, down dog. And then walk the feet forward again. Let's do one more round of opening the wrist. Um, this is one of my favorite ways to open. Um, stand on your palms. Crawl your toes to the base of the palms, right to the wrist crease. And then push your toes down. Put a little more weight to the front of your feet. Look forward and then pull your chest forward and up. 
to lengthen the arms and to open the space in the, in the wrist. And then come down, sit on your mat. Um, let's do a couple more really quick exercises. So one palm up, uh, fingers up, and then the other the hand down, and then you can go opposite hand. So on one side, we're stretching the hand one way, and the other side, we're stretching the hand the other way. Okay, so just push. Keep the hands active as you do this. So um, engage the forearms, squeeze the muscles into the bones. Um, so you're not passively pushing in, you're keeping the muscles toned. All right, and then switch. So the palm on the back of the opposite hand, and then push. You can also do this um, more symmetrically, palms together and press. So hopefully you can get to, uh, you know, close to the 90 degree angle. You might be up here. And then the idea is you, as you get more flexible, you're gonna lower the, the wrist. And then some of you can go drop the wrist lower than the elbows. And then this is a big stretch for me right here. This is a lot. All right, and then we can also do the same thing this way. Um, one other way to stretch, very similar, but arm out in front and then palm down. As I pull my hand down with my left hand, pulling the right hand down, I'm simultaneously I'm pushing the right hand forward. So I'm resisting the stretch just a little bit to keep the arm engaged. I can do the same thing the other way. I can pull the hand back or even pull back from the fingers, but I'm pushing out with this hand while I'm pulling back with the opposite hand. And then other side. Um, and then also down. All right, so then anytime we're on our hands um, in the yoga practice, um, just staying really engaged. Let's, one, more, one more thing that you can work on, uh, wrist, forearm, hand strength, um, elbows, or handstand, right? So now putting pretty much your full body weight um, onto your wrist, climb the legs up about hip height, spread your fingers wide and push your chest towards the wall. Okay, and then again, really important, Four corners of the palms press. Finger pads are engaged, pressing into the ground. And I'm squeezing my finger pads towards the center of my palms. And I'm pushing out through the four corners of the palms. All right, so that, that's a really great practice. Um, one more thing. Okay, so something you can do really in every yoga practice. And I'll do this once in a while, and I'll get on a kick where I do this all the time. And then I forget and I stop doing it. But then, um, and this might take some time to build up, but finger, uh, fingertips for down dog. And you can move through your sun salutations and your vinyasas on fingertips, okay? If this is too much, um, this may be too much. You can just do one hand at a time or just be in down dog for a couple of seconds and then put your palms flat come up for a couple of seconds, put your palms flat. But over time, you might build the strength to now move through the vinyasa, fingertips, chaturanga, up dog, down dog. Okay, so those are just some ideas for uh, building strength. Um, you know, those of you who climb or um, you if you're doing like a lot of pull-ups and things like that, and you want to improve your grip strength, um, improve your finger strength, um, these are some great ways to do it within the context of the yoga practice. You can do a short practice like this, or you can do these things throughout all of your other, other yoga practices. Okay, so I hope I've given you some things to think about and to work on. Um, thank you for practicing with me. I'll see you next time.